clocks, dolls, jewelry, glass, and more. Precious heirloom or work of art. Antiques Roadshow can let you know. Every year, Antiques Roadshow goes on tour, and in 2019, they chose West Fargo as one of the five cities to visit. Join us as we take you behind the scenes to meet producers, appraisers, and most importantly, the guests that make the show possible. Behind the Scenes, Antiques Roadshow, Bonanzaville. Hi, we're here at Bonanzaville in West Fargo, North Dakota, where they're busy getting the grounds ready to host Antiques Roadshow. Soon, people from across the region and even the country will be streaming in, hoping they're holding treasures. We'll find out more when the appraisers get to work, but for now, the Antiques Roadshow crew is busy setting up for the big show. As the saying goes, location, location, location. And choosing the right location for Antiques Roadshow can be quite the process. With over 70,000 visitors each year and history lessons around every corner, Bonanzaville in West Fargo, North Dakota was an easy choice for the Antiques Roadshow crew to make. Executive Director of Bonanzaville, Brenda Warren, fills us in and what makes Bonanzaville such a special place. Brenda, thanks for joining us today. Well, thanks for coming to Bonanzaville. Why are we at Bonanzaville today? Because we're all excited about this coming weekend. The Antique Roadshow is coming to town. With Antiques Roadshow, there's always these great learning opportunities. And Bonanzaville just seems like a great place to talk about the history of this area. You know, this is a historic village that dates back to 1954. The founder was Ken McIntyre, and he had a vision and that vision was to bring in historic buildings from throughout the county of Cass County and to actually bring in artifacts from this area. And we have over 400,000 artifacts and over 40 buildings. So there's so much history here. We bring them back to the past. Shooting on Saturday, setting up on Friday. They must really have this down. I think the Antiques Roadshow has done this so many times. They have this down to a science. Brenda, thanks so much for your time today. Well, thank you for coming. You know, the public is so excited as we are. We're just excited to have the Antique Roadshow here. It's the first time ever that they've been to the Fargo, West Fargo area, and we couldn't be prouder that they chose us. The crew arrives and hits the ground running, setting up all the equipment, and there is lots of it so people like line producer Jill Giles can get the show on the road. Jill, thanks for joining me today. Thank you, it's good to be here. How'd you pick Bonanzaville? Well, we had a lot of people from North Dakota that were been writing and calling us, telling us that we needed to come. And so we've been listening to them. And when we moved to this new format where we film outside, um, we had said, do you have any places there? And they said, yes, we do. And it's Bonanzaville. And we immediately got onto the internet and started looking around and they have a great 360 video where you can basically drop into any building and all over the streets and take a virtual tour. And we all fell in love with it immediately. And we'd be like, this is going to be great for the show. And then your impression when you actually got here, did it meet your online expectations? Absolutely. I mean, for us, it's just the size of it is perfect. There's just so much charm. There's so many different angles where we can film and there's so much history. I mean, it's just like the history of North Dakota in one spot. It was kind of a no-brainer. It's really perfect for Roadshow. How about for the staff and the volunteers here? What are their days like? We work pretty hard when we're on site. We're here before sunrise, actually. We were here this morning around 6 a.m., setting up, getting our cameras ready, testing all of our equipment, running power everywhere. Then we do a rehearsal in the afternoon, train all our volunteers. And then on event day, we're all here at 6 a.m., and then we'll record from 7.30 until the last person leaves, 7 o'clock. And then we'll stay after everybody has left and pack everything back up. And we roll our trucks back out somewhere around 10 or 11 o'clock at night. How important are volunteers to Antique Roadshow? Oh, they, we really could not do this without our volunteers. They, they are the face of Roadshow on the event day. Um, all of us are kind of behind the scenes working really hard and the volunteers are the ones that greet everybody, that help move the crowd through, who answer all of our questions. So 
when you come as a guest to Antiques Roadshow, you're basically going to interface with a volunteer. So it's really important that they, you know, that they can represent us in a good way. And they, they usually are fantastic. What is a line producer? Um, well, one of the things I do as a line producer is select the items to go on television. So um, when we have the events here, I'll kind of listen to pitches and make a determination of whether we want to film it or not and how we want to film it. How do you make that decision? Do you kind of go with your gut, go with research? Is there geography, like something North Dakota specific? Well, we have a lot of input from our appraisers who are the experts. So we'll listen to what the appraisers have to say and then we'll interview the guests and see how would they be on TV? Are they, are they really talkative? Um, you know, what, is, it, is there something that they're gonna learn from this? And then we'll kind of say, is this gonna be a shorter segment or a longer segment? And how do we want to film it? We were able to catch up with one of those lucky enough to be selected by Jill to go in front of the lights and cameras for a tape to appraisal. And we're here with Robbie who had an item selected for a taped appraisal. Robbie, congratulations. Thank you. How's that feel? Uh, awesome, <laughs> unexpected, but awesome. Is this your first road show experience? Uh, yes, ma'am, other than watching it on TV. Yeah. How's it compare to watching it on TV? Uh, this is a lot way cooler. <laughs> So tell us about your experience. How was your day? Well, I brought in my wife's original Star Wars figures from 77 in the early 80s, the first three movies. And we have one of the jowls in there. The original ones came in a vinyl cape. Well, the guys saw that and it's like, oh, they had to go on TV. So, so that was pretty cool because they were very limited production of those with that. Because when they actually came out with the, from what I was told, the second line or the second production of them in the following year, they all had um, cloth capes. My wife was meticulous about keeping all of her stuff in, in their individual little places, all clean and everything. So it's really amazing that, you know, that it was all her effort really has paid off. And the actual appraisal, were you surprised what you learned? Yeah, I was. Very good surprise. Um, in fact, I think some of this is going to go home and get insured just in case. Well, what was it like being up there? You're under oh. all this big tent, <laughs> all these lights, 12 cameras. Totally normal Saturday, right? Oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> if you're from Hollywood, maybe, but uh, not in my world. No, it, it's a little nerve wracking a little bit. But there again, you know, the everybody here is a really good crew. They, they, they're very professional and, and they treat you like a human and that's nice. So it, it's a wonderful experience, it really is, because you're, you're not a number or a, an object. You, you, you are part of this roadshow family, I guess. Some of the most valuable volunteers that Antiques Roadshow has are its stars, the appraisers themselves. The night before the big taping, Prairie Public Broadcasting hosted an event in its studios to welcome Antiques Roadshow to the Fargo, West Fargo area, where we caught up with two of the appraisers sharing their expertise this season. And we're here with Ken Farmer, one of the appraisers working the folk arts table for the Bonanzaville event. Ken, thanks for joining us. Happy to be here. What is folk art? That's a good question. The, uh, people still discuss that. Uh, but, you know, to me, it's a very subjective subject. And people ask me this all the time, and I say, well, I think folk art is, is defined by, you know, what the artist intended and um, just, you know, how you want to interact with it, too. You know, and I've learned a lot from working with the other appraisers on the show. How much interaction is there with other appraisers? Oh, a lot. As a matter of fact, uh, we have to get a second opinion and say who we got it from when we fill out the form, who our collaborator was on that. There's a lot of checks and balances because, you know, we don't want to go on TV on Monday nights with millions of people watching you and, and be wrong. <laughs> it would be easy to describe this show as, as a show about things and, and objects, but you learn a lot about humans and, and what we are as people? Well, first of all, the thing that's most important other than the fact that, you know, is it an object that will, you know, be something decent to go on TV with? It's not about the money. I think it's about the story. 
and if the person that owns it is excited about it and somewhat animated, then my job is 10 times easier. And let them tell their story. That is exactly what this is about, that you know we have things in our homes and they bring back memories for us. They stir emotions. Like if it's been hanging beside the dining room table for a hundred years, how many conversations have been said in front of it and how many meals have been eaten in front of it. And you know, those are the kind of things that really matter uh, from a human point of view. If you have something that came down through your family like that, you have something priceless. And no matter what we tell you, how much dollars it's worth, it's priceless to your family. And as I said earlier, it's not always about the money. And we're here now with Kathy Bailey, who appraises a glass for Antiques Roadshow. Kathy, thank you so much for joining us. Well, thank today. you for inviting me. How do you prepare for these appraisals? Because, I mean, it strikes me that, that working as an appraiser, you have to have this combination skill set of being having deep knowledge in your field, but also you have to be a quick study because you can't know everything. It, it is difficult. It is difficult. And um, I happen to still carry a couple suitcases of books because my books are all marked and paginated where I need to be to find certain things. So it's computer and books and I study on the airplane coming, and I study going home to see if I missed anything I should have should have done. It's a constant learning process. It's constant. So the appraisers not only don't get paid for their time, but you are coming out here from Seattle at your own expense and mm-hmm. wherever the tour takes you. Why uh, are you donating why? this much of your time? Well, from the very beginning, I can remember appraisers would raise their hands and say, excuse me, uh, how do we work this so we get paid? <laughs> that was at the beginning. And if you ask me today, I would be amongst a lot of them that would say, no, thank you. It's an experience I can't explain but it also is good for business. There's definitely advantages. And I think that that's what keeps us coming. Plus the fact we like doing it and it isn't like a job. And I just feel really relaxed. I think it's wonderful. (laughs) Do you have tips for people who are chosen for being on TV? And most people don't have experience being on TV. Yes. How do you work with the guests? I think probably in 23 years, I have never been on TV with anybody that's been on TV. So they're scared and they're a little bit nervous. And I just tell them, I tell them I'm nervous too, which is true. Then we get on and we just look at each other and we try to forget that what's going on around us and just um, try to talk about the item and try to say what we can say about it. When it is over, they are just so thrilled it's over, (laughs) but they're thrilled they did it. And that's the important thing. And they have a story to tell for the rest of their lives. And we're here with Eric, who was just lucky enough to get selected to have an item appraised on camera. Eric, congratulations. Thank you. What do we have here? Uh, It was, uh, well, it is a stained lead glass piece from, I was told, turn of the century France. Uh, My mom bought it about 25 years ago out in California at an antique store, and I just got it from her last year. What'd you learn about it? I learned that it's gorgeous, even if it's not in the perfect shape. Um, I like I should get it looked at and try to maybe get fixed, but it definitely is something that needs to be displayed because when light shines through it, it's pretty neat looking. With an anticipated 3,000 visitors to Bonanzaville, we arrived Saturday morning to find the lines out the door, with guests clutching their items, eager to share what they know, and anxious to learn more. 
here with Katie at the very beginning of your Antiques Roadshow adventure. Katie, what do you got in your hands? Well, I have the El Jumperino. It's a game, I think, from the 1930s or the 1940s. I'm here to find out which. Um, it comes with these little wooden um, pins and also a top. And um, you just kind of score the game with by putting the wooden pins on the um, the point systems here throughout and then you spin the top starting from here and you go through the series and you just um, compete against your friends or family or whoever you want. Do you play El Jumperino? Um, actually my dad um, picked it up at a rummage sale about 15-20 years ago and we did play it. <laughs> Scary, what is this? This is a small vase of some sort that came from East Berlin I believe. Uh, what makes you say I believe? It had a sticker on the bottom of it and I can't exactly remember where it said it came from in Berlin. It was in East Berlin, so I was assuming during the war. How did you get this? Uh, we're not sure. We think it's from Grandma. So you're here hoping to get some well, answers. We're going to get some answers today, but it's a very unique piece. Deborah, thanks for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. What is this? It's a picture that my great-grandfather won in a poker game in Ramona, California. In a poker game? Mm -hmm. And it's the countries and states are represented 13 times, 13 stars, all the way through. Do you have a sense of how old this is? I'm 66 years old, and it was done, I never met my great grandpa. Have you done any research? No. Do you know anything about it? No, not a thing. <laughs> Only thing I know is my name is on the back of it, and it's mine. And I'm here with a Tracy, who is at the beginning of her Antiques Roadshow experience. Tracy, what is this? You know, um, I was told that it's a piece from Jamaica. Um, I'm not sure what wood, what type of wood it is, or I don't have too much information about it. I brought it to the Antique Roadshow, hoping that someone can give me more information about it. And um, it's valued. How did it come into your life? I have a store and I go around to everywhere, anywhere to save, I'll go looking for treasures. So you came here from Illinois? Yes. Okay. Just for Roadshow? I love the Roadshow. I love the Roadshow. I've been wanting to come to the Roadshow for years. And I got the opportunity to be here today and I wasn't going to miss it for anything. <laughs> None of this would be possible without the tour de force that is Marsha Bemko, executive producer of Antiques Roadshow. Hi, thanks for joining us. Delighted to be here. What do you love about Antiques Roadshow? Pretty much everything, except the stuff I don't, getting up early in the morning and stuff like that. But the show itself, I love everything about producing the show. You know, here we are in season 24. That's what we're shooting this year. The thing that keeps the show fresh is the reality aspect of it. Well, we produce two things, the shows, but we make an event where we will see several thousand people who need to have a good experience and are coming to learn about their antiques. This is a great place to do it, and we've got great weather. Thank you. How's the show gonna work tomorrow? It is gonna work like it always does, very organized. You're gonna come into our area that we call triage, telling you where to bring your two antiques. Are you going to glass or are you going to metal work? Where are you going? Then you'll go to your respective table and you'll walk over, let's say you have pottery, you can go see David Rago. And what you have is very typical and common, which is most people's experience. And David's going to tell you, you have a vase. It was made circa 1970. It's worth between 25 and $50. You put flowers in it. Do you have any further questions? That is what is a typical experience for somebody. But let's say your pot is different and better. Instead, what David would say would be, would you mind waiting for a producer? And David will pitch the story and we will listen to him and to interview the guest to decide whether or not to tape it. We don't tape everything they pitch, of course, but we tape about a total between the multi-cam and the single cam, about 150 segments. So we capture a lot. What are your favorite ingredients, if you will? for picking what's gonna be on the show? When it's all perfectly aligned, it's a collector who knows a little something about what they have, but it's an unusual item so they don't know everything. 
or it's somebody who inherited something, who knows a little something about what they have, but they don't know everything. And they are genuinely excited to learn about what they own. And they are gonna have that conversation and we have a skilled appraiser who's a very telegenic appraiser. The item is worth a fortune, let's face it. I'm Antiques Roadshow, we're executive producer. So it's not for a small amount of money. It's a record-breaking amount of money. But that's a perfect ingredient and you have seen appraisals close to that on Roadshow. Mm -hmm. You've seen people discover they own half million dollar items or more and had no clue about it. But most people are reasonable. They don't expect to have a million dollar item. They're not expecting that. Many come with questions as to was this made in the East or West? Did my family bring it here or did they acquire it here? Those kinds of things that may be solved, not just the money answer. Does Marsha Bemko get surprised in 24 seasons? Oh yeah. You still do. Still do. When you make and produce a show like this and an event, you touch so many, they will never cease to surprise you. Well, thank you. Thank you. Of the thousands that come through Antiques Roadshow, precious few get selected for the lights camera action of a taped appraisal. We caught up with one who shared how it went. And we're here with Doris, who just finished up an appraisal on this beautiful piece. Doris, what did you learn about this? Well, I learned that it is Weller Sicard. And Sicard was a Frenchman who came up with the glazes for it. And he applied for a job in Zanesville with Weller Company. It's a well-known pottery company. And I found out that all of these clovers on here are hand-painted by him and it is signed Weller and it is signed Sicard right oh, right yeah. in it yeah. so that you can you know it's him. <laughs> what do you think of the roadshow experience? Oh I loved it. Everybody was great. Everybody was just taking care of us. Are you gonna take this home and yes. give it a good shine? Yes I am. Yeah. He said hot soapy water might be all it takes. After a long day of gathering enough material for three episodes and seeing thousands of guests, the Antiques Roadshow crew is wrapping up and packing up and moving on to the next town after having left their mark on the visitors to Bonanzaville. And we're here with Karen and Cindy who are just wrapping up their Antiques Roadshow experience. Those are some big smiles that tells me good things. Very good things, very <laughs> good things. We found out that the treasures probably aren't as valuable to some people as they are to us, which is perfectly fine. We have some darling, adorable rings. We have a plaque and a couple of great um, uh, Native American uh, art pieces. And surprisingly, um, more valuable than, than I thought. Well, just the, the tone of the day, how did you find the experience? Oh, what did you think? I thought it was a lot of fun. It, was, it went so quickly yeah. and so much information, I should have mm. taken notes, really. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was great. The day was wonderful. And they, everything moved so smoothly. I mean, this was well orchestrated, <laughs> very well. <laughs> what are you gonna do with these treasures back at home? Well, I'm going to hang this back up and I'm going to hang these back up and the jewelry belongs to my twin granddaughters. So I will give them their rings back and um, yeah, yeah, goes right back to regular living. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm here with Christy, who has just finished up her Antiques Roadshow experience. Christy, how did it go? Uh, Nana Bajou, it was absolutely wonderful. I'm actually double blessed to be here today. I have an exhibit in the Native Heart of the Museum, which represents our ceremonial clothing. Um, so being an enrolled member of Turtle Mountain Band of Chippewa, we uh, do We Wang Wachipi, which is the sun dance, and Hombletja Vision Quest, um, Ishna Talnawan, which is becoming a woman ceremony. 
And so as I've raised my family and helped them move through ceremony on Rite of Passage, their items are in the museum. And my oldest daughter is blessed with the gift of doing the beadwork. And so her beadwork is also being represented in the museum today. How do you feel about Antique Store Show being specifically at Bonanzaville? Because you're on mm -hmm. the board here. I am on the board of directors at Bonanzaville. And they have worked so hard. Um, Brenda, Warren, Melissa, they have worked so hard throughout the years to you know, pull together the funding because they had the vision of how the land could be utilized and the historical pieces that we could bring together to represent the communities that made North Dakota. So not just the indigenous people, but the Scandinavians, the Norwegians, um, all of them coming together um, and representing their culture and their, uh, their lineages, um, their ceremonies and their traditions. And we see that with the vision of Bonanzaville. And we're just so blessed that um, this land is utilized in the way that it was supposed to be utilized and continue to see it grow. And we know that Antiques Roadshow will find the interest in, in the value of not just the people, but the items and the history and the knowledge that we want preserved here at Bonanzaville. It's been a long and fun day here at Bonanzaville and people are heading home wrapping up their Antiques Roadshow experience with great memories. Thanks for watching.